cannot offer i don't want to feel the guilt but yeah so people can feel free to keep something to drink or eat if you need during my classes it's completely okay you know i can understand okay so a quick a quick summary before we go forward anyone would like to give a quick summary for the ecosystem one someone should volunteer right i'm tired of picking people it feels very very bossy anyone would like to do no then then i'll with your respect i'll ask atif I think would you like to give a quick summary today? Yes, sir. Could you call me? Yes, I uh, would you like to give a quick summary today? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Atif. Yes. Uh, so we started the chapter ecosystem. Mm -hmm. We learned what exactly an ecosystem. It is a functional unit of na nature. where different living organisms interact among the, them, themselves and also with the physical environment mm -hmm. so we learned about the different types of ecosystems some ex uh, like terrestrial ecos uh, ecosystems some examples are uh, forests grasslands deserts and aquatic ecosystems some examples uh, are ponds lakes seas oceans and such mm -hmm. yeah so so one thing i would like to one thing i would like to clarify here is that the the boundary conditions of ecosystem is not very fixed okay just giving an example you can say that a uh, forest is an ecosystem right but many a times within the forest only you will find a lake right so a lake is within a forest inside a forest a small portion of the forest is a lake it happens correct so if you are studying the whole forest including the lake you can say it's a forest ecosystem but if you are specifically studying the lake within that forest you can say that there is a aquatic lake ecosystem within the forest so do you understand the boundary conditions they are they, they are quite dynamic it depends on what what you want to study as a ecosystem but it should whatever you choose it should fit within this definition of it being a functional unit of nature where different living organisms interact among themselves and also with the physical environment so that has to be there the size and the boundary conditions can vary is that clear Yes, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> Continue. Yes. Then we learned about the structure and function of an ecosystem. Like we learned about the different types of components, specifically uh, biotic components, which are the living organisms in the ecosystem, and abiotic components, which are the non-living components such as uh, wind, water, etc. Uh, yeah. then we learned about stratification which is the vertical distribution of different species uh, they occupy different levels an example is in a forest some trees are taller than others so they occupy like di different layers of the forest so the trees occupy the top layer and herbs and grasses occupy uh, lower layers the bottom layers um, then we learned about the, the lake ecosystem lake ecosystem and the <coughs> stratification in this ecosystem um so this is an example of uh, animal stratification yes uh, then we learn about the different the basic components of an ecosystem so one of the components is 
productivity so productivity yeah. is yeah. the these are the different <clears throat> components so structure and function which defines then components means how it produces things so productivity then how it decomposes things which is decomposition this we are going to do today energy flow and nutrient cycling <clears throat> yeah continue yes so we learned about productivity so we learned that it is the amount of biomass produced per unit area over a time period by the plants uh, with the process of photosynthesis so it can be expressed in weight or energy so for weight it is uh, measured in uh, per gram square per year and for the energy it is measured in uh, kilocalorie per meter square per year so there are uh, two types of productivity that is uh, gross primary productivity and uh, net primary productivity yeah so gross primary productivity is the <clears throat> gross primary productivity is the rate of production of organic matter during photosynthesis and net primary productivity is the available biomass for the consumption to heterotrophs and net net, <clears throat> net primary productivity can be obtained by subtract, subtracting the respiratory loss from the gross primary productivity correct then we learned about secondary productivity which is the it is the rate of formation of new organic matter by the consumers that is the heterotrophs yes right okay so thank you so much atif and uh, so today we'll start from here so productivity is done and the next thing that we can we have to focus on is how decomposition happens in an ecosystem okay so decomposition in ecosystem okay now first thing why do you think decomposition is important what if the ecosystem just produces and does not decompose what's the problem tell me what's the problem do you see any problem yeah the dead matter will uh, pile up all around the world and can cause problem the dead matter will pile up and will cause a problem okay that's one so you mean diseases of various kinds will start right that's yes. there but let's for uh, any anything else anything more fundamental than that piling up of dead matter is um it's a good point it's a valid point anything apart from that the soil will not be replenished with nutrients exactly so whatever we are we are producing for that also we need raw nutrients right no raw material and uh, we are only getting one thing which is unlimited <coughs> that is sunlight rest everything is limited because it's limited by the earth so if it things does not good get decomposed they will not come back to the primary producers so that it can again get produced into something so if we continuously keep producing after one point of time we have to stop because everything will be exhausted everything will be piled up like uh, atif is saying make sense yes sir yeah cool so uh, what is what is decomposition for before that before we talk about decomposition we have to talk about who does decomposition who does this who do you think decomposes things in nature 
or decomposes. Yes. Any example? Purple. Yes. Yes, it is earthworm. It's one of the examples. There are many more, you know, even bacteria does that, correct? Yes, sir. Breaks it down. To some extent, even fungi does that. Yes or no? They also decompose dead and decaying matter and feed on it. Right? Yes, sir. But majorly, let's talk about earthworm. So, let's define decomposition first. Write down. <clears throat> the process of breaking down In the process of breaking down complex organic matter. <coughs> The process of breaking down complex organic matter into simpler inorganic substances. Okay, this is decomposition. Now, the matter, this, uh, this complex organic matter which we are using, what is this known as? This is called detritus. Okay. So, if you want to define detritus, detritus is the raw material for decomposition. Okay? And these organisms that feed on detritus are called Can go here. So organisms that feed on detritus are called detritivores. Is that clear, everyone? Yes. Great. <clears throat> now, in the process, let's talk about process of decomposition.
so it has it has following it has some steps through which this whole process happens right um, anyone can you think of some steps like we start with this we start with detritus what's going to happen then Yes, people. <clears throat> What's going to happen if we start with if we start with the detritus? First, we have to because detritus can be big. We have not given examples, so let me give examples so that it's more clear. Uh, so examples of detritus are anything, any organic matter like tree, trunk, or any dead. Tissue. Okay, these all are detritus. Or uh, fecal matter. Fecal matter. All this is detritus. Uh, these are all big, bulky components. Correct. So the idea is to break it down. So what we do is. Uh, we take detritus and we start fragmenting it. So the first thing is you need to do fragmentation of detritus. Now this is this is a different. So so the so the word means the same that it, it it's fragmenting, right? But it, you have studied fragmentation also as a a part of asexual reproduction. So this is not that fragmentation. This is just simple breakdown of the detritus. Okay. Once broken down, then this detritus needs to be <clears throat> uh, whatever nutrient. So whatever um, uh, whatever useful thing is present in the detritus that gets leached in the water so next is leaching okay we will talk about it so let's first write about fragmentation write down breaking down of detritus into smaller particles okay is that clear is it clear everyone yes sir yeah and then leaching is I don't where water soluble nutrients or substances okay, seep into the soil. with water for this to happen you need water as a precipitation like rain is a good example or if there is a water body like a river uh, somewhere nearby okay And what gets leached is gone into the soil again to be reused by the uh, primary producers. But what's left can still be broken by 
catabolic. reactions or also known as catabolism okay so in this what happens is um, there are um, bacteria as i said as i said for fragmentation even earthworm can do that okay so earthworm here earthworm can do fragments because it can physically chew the detritus but some things cannot be broken just by physical force so you need enzymatic reactions so there bacterial and fungal enzymes comes into picture so these bacterial and fungal enzymes degrade degrade the detritus into simpler chemicals okay is that clear and if they are chemicals they are again inorganic so the whole point is that you have to make it inorganic so that again organic system can take it up and use it to produce something else so that's the whole purpose okay makes sense yes sir yeah so please write these things down now it's not like always it happens one after the other these three steps can also happen together simultaneously on a detritus so for example when earthworm is eating it it's fragmenting the detritus while at the same time simultaneously there are bacteria in the gut of the earthworm that is breaking down the detritus into uh, simpler chemicals using the enzymes and at the same time when the bacteria is uh, sorry when the earthworm is defecating it back in the soil uh, the water soluble nutrient is leaching down as well make sense yes sir so you can write and these above three steps can also takes place simultaneously on a detritus Okay, <clears throat> shall we move forward? done everyone yes sir okay now uh, there are two more terms called humification and mineralization any idea what are these humification and so this word comes from humus <clears throat> so 
So humification. What is it? Formation of humus. Yeah, it's accumulation. Okay. Formation is happening. Hum what is humus? It's a nutrient to the rich layer in the soil. Yes. And uh, um, where have you read it before? We say that uh, humus makes a soil more fertile, right? Yes. How? It's rich in nutrients. Yes. <clears throat> Great. So, um, also, it is resistant to microbial action that degrades the, the that breaks down uh, everything so it can act as a and also it's it's it does not properly fully solubilizes in water so with these properties it can act as a reservoir okay a reservoir for nutrients in the soil. Okay. So write down. Humification is accumulation of an amorphous substance. That is humus. And humus is mostly a very uh, dark colored. And as, 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 as you said that it forms a layer, that's true. And that layer mostly does not get degraded that fast. So if there is humus, uh, so the soil will will be more fertile. So th that's the idea. So the idea is if there is a humus layer in the soil, so the it will act as a reservoir and very slowly. So the decomposition of humus is very slow. So very slowly it will keep giving the nutrients back in the soil. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> now, from this humus, this slow rate of degradation, So this slow rate of degradation due to bacteria. So there are again bacteria that that help in, in, in unlocking those nutrients present in the humus very slowly. So that slow rate of decomposition is known as mineralization. So the minerals are coming back to the soil. Okay. So you can define it as the slow release of the slow release of inorganic nutrients from the humus slow release of inorganic nutrients from the humus um, by some bacteria degradation by bacteria is called mineralization.
from humans by bacterial degradation. Are the two terms clear? humification and mineralization. Is it clear, everyone? So can I repeat for humification? For oh, humification. Uh, for, for humification, you're saying, or for mineralization? <clears throat> yeah, so it's like, uh, as, we, as I said, that uh, normally all the detritus uh, gets broken down by earthworm, bacteria, and then whatever is broken down in, in the form of inorganic particles get leech, leaches into the soil through by becoming soluble in water, correct? Sometimes, yes. some nutrient becomes humus. The humus is very resistant to bacterial degradation because it's it's also not soluble in water, that, that soluble. So it acts as a colloid, you know, colloidal particles, uh, how colloidal particles behave, correct? So colloidal particles stay suspended in the water. They don't dissolve in the water, okay? So uh, humus is like that. And humus very, very slowly gets degraded. So it's a detritus that has been turned into a colloid, which very slowly gets degraded and it acts as a reservoir of nutrients. Okay. So it's an amorphous substance, amorphous uh, crystal, like a amorphous crystalline substance that gets deposited in the soil and makes a layer and acts as a reservoir for nutrients. Okay. Yes. So to get nutrients out of, so that process of accumulation of amorphous substance that is humus is called humification. And if you have to get nutrients out of it, then you have to wait for the slow degradation and slow release of this nutrient from humus by bacterial degradation, or it can be fungal as well, but fungus don't go that deep into the soil. So mostly it's, it's bacterial. And that process is called uh, mineralization. Okay, is that clear? Mineralization? Yes, sir. Yeah. So both terms are clear to you? Yes, sir. Okay. Great. Please note this down and let me know when you're done. Then everyone? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we have produced, we have decomposed. Okay. Now, one more topic that we will start today is energy flow. What do we mean by energy flow?
So if I ask you like, um, it's, it's flow of energy, correct? So what do we mean by that? First, before we talk about this, what is the source of energy in nature? Solar energy. Mm -hmm. Solar Sorry? energy. Yeah, correct. Solar energy or the sun. Okay, this is mostly true for all ecosystems except for um, mm, very deep sea ecosystems where you have. So deep sea ecosystems, they don't have sun. Okay, so what do they have? They have hydrothermal vents. Okay, heat comes from the uh, core of the earth okay also known as geo oh, sorry. oh why is it not working also known as geothermal energy okay the term geo means Earth, geography. Hydro means water. And thermal means heat. Is that clear, everyone? Yes, sir. So very deep inside the sea when there is no sun, you rely on or organisms rely on the heat of the earth okay cool now but let's let's talk about this scenario let's not go to the exceptions let's stick to solar energy so tell me um, in a forest ecosystem, what happens? So you said, you told me that supreme energy is sun. And who gets energy from the sun? Plants. Yes. They are known as primary producers. Okay. Is that clear? Yes. And from primary producers, the energy flows to herbivores for example cattle and they are called primary consumers and from there it goes to Carnivores, for example, tiger, and they are called
secondary consumers. Okay. <clears throat> Does it stop here? Yes, no. 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 Then? Some cases there will be tertiary consumers. In some cases, there will be tertiary consumers. Okay. Like? I think human. So human don't eat tigers, no? I think for that matter, if they want to, they can. Yeah, yeah, but naturally we don't, right? You're right, it can happen, but something that is more more frequent. So carnivores will also die. You're correct. I mean, um, there can be there can be ecosystems where, apart from primary uh, consumers and secondary consumers, and there are tertiary consumers. Correct, but when they die. What happens? Remember, uh, what do vultures eat? Organi oh, no. Organisms that depend on dead and decaying matter are called? Sorry? And, no, did you say predator? Predator is tiger. I mean, they're called So can you repeat what you asked? I'm having some disturb. Yeah, organisms uh, that rely on dead and decaying matter. Saprophytes. Yes. So saprophytes work at all levels, at the level of carnivores. Even if when herbivores die, there also you get saprophytes, right? If carnivores don't eat it, but mostly it happens. So the idea is in this model, we are not going to use that. We are just going to believe that all primary producers go to primary consumers, then secondary consumers, and when they die, they go to saprophytes. And saprophytes, you know, kind of bring it back to the primary producers, right? Make sense? Yes. Great. So let's write here. Organisms that feed on dead and decaying matter. Yes, please draw this. So if an example comes that show with an example, the flow of energy in an ecosystem, you can use this.
okay now this particular part from carnivores to saprophytes as i told you this can happen at all particular levels okay everyone has done drawing this yes sir yeah okay so it can be done at all levels hence there is something called detritus food chain or d f c okay <clears throat> so this starts from um, the detritus now before we go that there is one question that has asked uh, that has been asked is uh, what about what about an aquatic ecosystem what happens in a aquatic ecosystem is there a detritus so this what we see here is called a um, gfc okay if you do not bring this component let me erase this let's say we are not putting it back through saprophytes to the plants so i hope you all have written it i'm just not drawing it again i'm just removing some parts to explain so let's say this part is not present so just uh the thing which is in the red box let's focus on just this one so this will be called as gfc is called the grazing food chain okay yes if i include uh, saprophytes decomposers detritivores which will which can nutrient it back uh, and and can close the loop so in some ecosystems uh there are no saprophytes can you tell me such ecosystems where only gfc is followed okay i'll give you an example one is you can write down gfc is on uh, write down in in aquatic ecosystem gfc is the major gfc which is the major mode of energy flow okay why is that what do you think why is that get okay, think about it why no detrit detritivores we are we are not uh, assume we are not incorporating any detritivores in the model why okay 
so this will take on next time okay is it okay everyone yes yeah anything you want to ask <laughs>